Welcome to Counterculture, a talk show in a diner. Join me tonight. Extraordinary watercolorist, Eve Mountford. When you see people's reactions that see your work for the first time, there's nothing like that. All right here on Counterculture. Welcome to Counterculture, a talk show in a diner. Hello, I'm Grover Silcox, coming to you from Daddy Pop's Diner in beautiful downtown Hatboro. My next guest is a Bucks County artist who came all the way across the pond from Murray Old England and has captured the world in his paintings and has an amazing body of work. It is a pleasure to have Keith Mountford at the counter. Keith, how are you? Well, thanks. Thanks for having me. Oh, it's an absolute pleasure. I love your paintings. And Thank the you. thing that I was most taken by was when you said that uh, you adapted to your new home in America yeah. and outside of Philadelphia by painting it. Yeah. When I first moved here, I, I sort of felt like I needed this sense of belonging. I met the girl of my dreams from Bucks County. Mm -hmm. uh, one of us had to make this decision. Who, where are we going to live? You right. know, who's going to make that move? And I always thought that being, first of all, in sales, which is what, what I was in at the time, corporate sales, I worked for Procter & Gamble in the UK, yeah. <laughs> that it would be easy for me to just give it all up and right. start afresh in a new country. And it was and it wasn't. You know, I mean, I was happy personally, but when I first moved here, it was really hard to adapt to the new culture. Right. For the first 18 months I lived here, um, going from job to job to job, had six jobs in the first 18 months. <laughs> and I realized that if I didn't do something completely different, right. then it wasn't going to work out. But were you an artist to begin with? When I was a kid, I was. I mean, I always, I always saw myself being creative. I always had a pencil in my hand. I was always drawing something simple or, or whatever, but never with the plan or idea that I was going to adapt it into a career. And and so subsequently I didn't. You know, I went uh, about my life, got a really great job. I've got a, a dozen years behind me. Ah. It's not going to change until you find yourself being a fish out of water in, in, in another <laughs> place. And so here I found myself looking to do something else. And my wife and I sat down one day and, you know, and I said to her, I've got to do something else. And her comment to me was, I'm willing to support that. Wow. Whatever you want to do is fine with me. That was really the start of it. Um, mm -hmm. I went to our local library, mm -hmm. picked up a book <laughs> on how to paint in watercolor. Um, having dabbled a little bit in England before I left, really sort of taught myself the medium of watercolor. I'd always, perspective had never been an issue for me. Mm -hmm. Pencil drawing had never been an issue. But I needed to adapt color. A friend of mine said to me when I first moved here, wow, this is really good. You know, these sketches are really good, mm -hmm. but you need to paint them. And if you paint them, then it's amazing. You know, the world is your oyster. It's hard yeah. to believe it when you look at some of your paintings. It's like, well, this guy must have been doing this since he was two. I yeah. mean, this looks so amazing. Thanks. I yeah. appreciate that. I've seen some of your time lapse videos. Right. And it's amazing how it starts out, you know, with a sketch. And yeah. It, you know, by the time you're done, it's this amazing watercolor. Right. And people that don't paint, you know, you have to make sure that part of your sales spiel is to explain to them what lies underneath. When you're creating something that is personal. Yes. And you put your heart and soul into it. It's amazing. It, it, it's not sales anymore, you know, right. because you just love it. And when you see people's reactions that see your work for the first time, there's nothing like that. I mean, it's just the most incredible feeling. I, I just think it's fantastic that you learn to love Philadelphia yeah. through your painting of it. Right. You have one right over here yeah. of uh, City Hall, I think. It is. Is this one of your first? This is one of my first. This was painted in 2003. When I say one of my first, one of my first that went into reproduction. Right. I really got to know the city of Philadelphia through, through painting it. And I would take four by six shots, get an overall perspective of, of a scene that I wanted to paint, mm -hmm. join them together, and that would give me the basis to actually do a very detailed pencil line drawing from it before I set about doing my watercolor painting with washes mm -hmm. and detail and dry brush and all the techniques that make up watercolor. Mm -hmm. And so this was about the second 
third painting into my Philadelphia series, the Art Museum Waterworks, which to this day is still one of my biggest selling reproductions. Alfred Sally in Philadelphia. Independence Hall. Independence Hall, I've done the, all of the main landmarks in Philadelphia I've painted over right. the years. I think I've seen Betsy Ross's house. Yeah, yeah. Point perspective was uh, right. really what drew me into creating these kind of paintings where you can actually see the vanishing point of the piece. If you can imagine having a straight edge on a flat piece of paper mm -hmm. and being able to go down the tops of the buildings and going up the sidewalk and bringing you into the arch of the doorway, mm -hmm. all of these lines that go vertically and horizontally throughout the foreground mm -hmm. are all made up through this point perspective vanishing point. So now this represents your most recent work. Yes, it does. Everything that I paint is, I have to have some kind of a relationship mm -hmm. with the scene. So in the summer of 2018, my wife Tracy, my son Jack and I, we took a month-long tour of Italy. And we did everything. Everything we could possibly do in that month-long tour. Part of that trip was to the city of Venice. And certainly from an artist's perspective, it blows everywhere else out of the water. Every corner of this city is a painting waiting to happen. It's an absolute artist's dream. What I've looked to develop in my style of realism painting in recent years mm -hmm. is not only to be able to create a very detailed, very lifelike drawing, but to incorporate a mood and an atmosphere with my now knowledge of 25 years worth of working with color. It's a work in progress, never ends. Absolutely. Uh -huh. yeah. And it's Absolutely. exciting to think where you'll be in another five years. And Absolutely. Day. Yeah, and you know, going back to my sales background and my sales training background, when I was a sales trainer working for Procter & Gamble, the key element to being a sales trainer was to be able to critique not only others, in the selling process, but also to be able to critique yourself too. Mm -hmm. So I always, I've always found that at the end of each painting, I'll take five steps back, you know, and I'll look at the piece over, overall, and, and I will look at what I need to do, what I learned from this piece, and what I can do on my next piece. And I've got go-to people that also come and help me critique. Right. What kinds um, of things will they say to you? A good friend of mine, Jill, she, she comes over all the time and she's the first person, she's my go-to person when it comes to a finished painting. She's got a great eye. She's not a painter, but she's a really great photographer. Right. And so she can see it from a objective perspective, knowing full well that I'm not looking to have my ego stroked. Right. I need you to see this piece for what, it's, what it is and what it says to you. Mm -hmm. And it's invaluable help, really. How do you uh, sell your paintings? How do people get, get them? I sell directly to the buying public. Mm -hmm. um, it's always been my way to go because I want to meet all the people that want to hang my work on the wall. They need to be able to tell my story when they hang the painting in their home or in their office or wherever it is. And so what I do is I do an, a series of art shows and festivals up and down the East Coast. I start in Massachusetts and go all the way down to Florida. The majority of those shows are within the spring, summer, and fall, and then it gives me the winter time in which to paint. But now that my son's off to college, uh, my wife just recently retired, we can now travel to Florida in the winter time. Mm -hmm. And then I can have a year-round marketplace in which to be in front of the buying public. What about your website? Uh, the site is www.keithmountford.com. Got it. And that's where folks can see your work Absolutely. and purchase it as well. Absolutely. And also on my Facebook page, too, mm -hmm. uh, which is my name, Keith Malford, or Keith Malford Watercolor Artist, and also on Instagram. Well, Keith, I want to thank you for coming to the counter and sharing your talents with us. Thank you for listening to me, Grover. They're awesome. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Keith Malford, a watercolorist who learns to love wherever he is by painting it.